सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट करिकुलम बेस्ड सीरीज ध्वनिशाला लेट्स ज्वाइन इन ध्वनिशाला क्लास सिक्स हेलो माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू आई होप यू ऑल आर सेफ हैप्पी एंड लव्ड माई नेम इज मानसी यू कैन ऑल्सो कॉल मी मानसी दीदी टूडे we will continue our second chapter of 6th standard that is whole numbers in this class we will try to understand commutative associative and distributive property of whole numbers we will also learn how to use these properties of whole numbers in solving variety of problems let us begin our fun mathematics class on whole numbers but before we begin make sure you have a notebook a pen a sharpened pencil and an eraser in our last class we played with number line we tried to add subtract multiply and divide on the number line we also learned that when we add we move to the right on the number line whereas when we subtract we move to the left of the number line in multiplication we were making jumps of equal distances starting from zero while in division we were making jumps of equal distance in to the left of the number line now friends today we will continue talking about properties of whole numbers let us first draw two number lines one below the other put your scale horizontally mark a straight line then mark 0 to 10 points on it friends when you are drawing a number line put an arrow to on extreme right side of your number line which means that numbers on this side can go on and on but on the left side of your number line starting from 0 there will be no arrow on the first number line let us first add 5 plus 4 now for that let us jump from 0 to 5 and then from 5 we will move four steps forward one step forward second step forward third step forward and fourth step forward where we all have reached we have reached at 9 when we added 5 plus 4 we got 9 on the other number line let us add 4 plus 5 so from 0 we will jump at 4 our first jump is at 4 then we will move 5 steps forward from 4 1 2 3 4 and 5 where we are at we are at 9 again friends let us do one more question let us add 5 plus 8 let us draw a big number line put your scale horizontally and mark a straight line then mark points 0 to 15 on it put an arrow on extreme right hand side of your line and no arrow on your left side now from 0 let us jump at 5 now we have to move eight steps forward let us go one step forward second step forward and so on and eight step forward we are at 13 so friends we can see that when we add 5 and 8 we get 13 we have to do again by adding 8 plus 5 here we will jump to 8 from 0 and then we will move five steps forward one step forward we are at 9 second step forward 10 third step 11 fourth step we are at 12 and at fifth step we have reached at 13 again so friends we can see that when we add two whole numbers in any order we are getting the same answer so we can conclude that we can add whole numbers in any order our answer will be the same thus addition is commutative for whole numbers but friends can we also subtract in any order i think not but let us see what will we get if we subtract 8 minus 5 yes you are right our answer will be 
3. But what will we get if we change the order here and subtract 5 minus 8? It's okay if we can't find the answer. But we know that the answer is not a whole number. Friends, similarly, we can see that 1 minus 0 is 1. But is 0 minus 1 also 1? No. So we can say that we cannot subtract whole numbers in any order and get the same result. Therefore, subtraction is not commutative for whole numbers. Now, let us check for multiplication and division. Let us multiply 3 times 4. Let us first draw a number line. On a number line, we will jump from 0 to 4. This will be our first jump. Then we will jump from 4 to 8. This will be our second jump. On our third jump, we will jump from 8 to 12. So 3 times 4, we are at 12. So we can say that when we multiply 3 into 4, we get 12. Let us see 4 times 3. So let us draw a number line again. Draw a straight horizontal line, mark points on it from 0 to 15. And now from 0, we will jump from 0 to 3. This will be our first jump. Then we will jump from 3 to 6. This will be our second jump. On our third jump, we will jump from 6 to 9. And on our fourth jump, we will jump from 9 to 12. So, friends, 4 times 3 give us 12 again. So, we can say that our answer remains 12. When we multiply 4 times 3 or if we multiply 3 times 4, we are getting the same answer. Let us try once more for 6 times 5. We know that the answer will be 30. And if we multiply 5 into 6, we will again be getting 30. So friends, we can say that multiplication is commutative for whole numbers. Will this result be true for division as well? Uh, what do you think so? Let us check together. Let us divide 25 by 5. We will get 5. But is it possible for us to divide 5 by 25 and also get 5? No, it will not be 5. We can do one more question. Let us try dividing 42 by 6. We know that the answer will be 7. But can we also divide 6 by 42 and get a whole number? No, the answer will not be a whole number. So friends, we can say that division is not commutative under whole numbers. Very good. So now, let us go back and meet our friends, Preeti and her group. One day, they all went to purchase some stationery and books. Sana purchased a 9 rupees scale. Sana purchased a 9 rupees scale, 11 rupees notebook and a 5 rupees sharpener. Can you help her how much money she has to give to the shopkeeper? Sana added 9 plus 11. She got 20 and then she added the amount for sharpener that was 5. She got 25. She felt happy counting it on her own. She felt happy counting it on her own. She was very happy that day. Manoj purchased a notebook for 199 rupees, a pencil for rupees 7, and the shopkeeper gave him a toffee for 1 rupee. How much money does Manoj have to give? Manoj calculated 199 plus 1 first and he got 200 rupees. Then he added 7 rupees to it and got 207 rupees. Did you enjoy how Sana and Manoj did their shopping? This way where we can change the grouping of numbers is called as associative property. And since we were adding here, this is associative property of addition. 
Let us try to find what is 14 plus 17 plus 6. I repeat, let us try to find 14 plus 17 plus 6. We can add 14 plus 17 first and then we can add 6 to it. If we'll add 14 plus 17 first, we will get 31. And then when we will add 6 to it, we will get 37. To show how you have added 14 plus 17 first, we can mark brackets around 14 and 17. Your bracket can open at 14 and close at 17 so that you can see what you have grouped first. We can also do it in another way. Can you guess what can be that way? We know that when we add 6 plus 4, we get 10. We also know that when we add 14 plus 6, we get 20. So it looks quite easy that we can add 14 plus 6 first and then add 17 to it. 20 plus 17 will give us 37. Here you can write 14 plus 6 plus 17 and mark brackets around 14 and 6. Your brackets can open at 14 and close at 6. Very good. This property where we rearrange the numbers so that we can conveniently add is known as associative property of additions. Let us try to add 234 plus 197 plus 103. I repeat, let us add 234, 197 and 103. Let us first draw brackets. I think I will mark brackets around 197 and 103. It looks easier to me to do it that way. I know that 7 plus 3 is 10. So, I am opening my brackets on 197 and closing it on 103. To add both the numbers, I will add 100 plus 100, I can get 200. Then I am adding 97 plus 3, that will be 100 again. So, inside the brackets, I have 200 plus 100 will be 300. So, inside the brackets, I have 200 plus 100, that is 300. So, 197 plus 103 will be 300. And adding 234 will give me 534. How we did that? We added first 300 and 200. And then we added 34 to it. So, our answer is 534. Now, friends, let us do one more question. Let us add 365 plus 9 plus 235. What do you think? How we can add so that our calculation becomes less tedious? Or we can do it quickly than everyone else? Let us see how we can do that. We know that 5 plus 5 gives us 10 and 10 is an easy number. So, let us take 365 and 235 inside our brackets. So, we can write the sum as 365 plus 235 plus 9. And let us open our brackets at 365 and close them at 235. We can do this without even pen and paper. Friends, we can see that the tens and ones digit of 365 are 6 and 5. We can add 65 and 35 together and we will get 100. We can add 300 and 200 together and we get 500. So, inside the brackets, we are getting 600. I repeat. We are getting 600. Let us see again how we are getting that. So we have 365 and 
235. We can add 300 and 200 together. We will get 500. And we can add 65 and 35 separately. That will give us 100 again. So 500 plus 100, we are getting 600. See how easy it has become. The number were looking dangerous to me. Now we only have to add 600 plus 9, which is very easy, which will be 609. So our answer is 609. And when we add it, 365 plus 235 plus 9. Friends, let us try with multiplication now. So let us multiply 12 into 35. Now we have to multiply 12 and 35. Friends, do you think we can write 12 as 6 times 2? So we can write 12 as a multiple of 6 and 2. So now we can multiply 35 into 2 which will give us 70 and then we can multiply the result with 6 which will be 70 into 6 which will give us 420. What we did, let us recap. We have to multiply 12 into 35. Since the numbers are big, so what we can do, we can write the multiples of a number. Since the number looks big, we can write factors of that number. So we can write 6 into 2 in place of 12 and we can multiply them by 35. Now we can multiply 35 into 2 which will give us 70 and then we can multiply the result with 6 and we got 420. You know friends, we can also write 70 as 7 into 10. So to make our calculations more easier, we can multiply 7 into 6 first which will give me 42 and then we can multiply 10 and we can get 420. Our question became easy, right? Let us try one more question. Let us try and multiply 25 into 4 into 36. So I repeat, let us multiply 25 into 4 into 36. There are numbers, right? There are big numbers. How we can do that? Do you know friends, if we add 25 and 25, we get 50. Adding 25 again, we can get 75. But if we add 25 fourth time, we will get 100. So if Virat Kohli scored 25 runs in 4 matches, you know his total score will be 100 runs. Now getting back to our question. We can also multiply here 25 into 4 first, which will give us 100. And now we can multiply 100 into 36, which will give us 3600. See how easy we made our calculation. Let us repeat what we have done here. We have to multiply 25 into 4 into 36. What we did here? We multiplied 25 into 4. It gave us 100. And then we multiplied 36 into 100. We got 3000. 600. You know friends, we can also write 36 as 6 into 6 and we can write 6 into 100 into 6. So that will again give us 3600. Now let us move higher level. Now let us do another question. Please write 8354 into 6 into 25 friends let us do one more question let us do 125 into 8 now we can write 125 as 25 into 5 how i know that you already checked that 25 into 4 is 100 and if we add 25 again to 100 it will give us 125. So friends, 125 can be written as 5 into 25. Very good. 
and the other number which we have to multiply is 8. So we can write 125 into 8 is equal to 25 into 5 into 8. Now friends, we can write 125 into 8 as 25 into 5 into 8. So now how to multiply these three numbers? We have to multiply 25 into 5 into 8. There can be various ways. Some of you must have been thinking that we can multiply 8 and 5 first which will give us 40 and then we can multiply it by 25. Or some of you must have been thinking that it was already easier to multiply 25 into 5 first and then multiply it by 8. There can be another way. Some of you must have been thinking that we can multiply 25 into 8 first. It will give us 200. How we did that? We know, we know that 25 into 4 give us 100. And if we multiply 2 to it, it will give us 200. So we can write 25 into 8 as 25 into 4 into 2. Friends, you can write 25 into 8 as 25 into 4 into 2. Now, we know that 25 into 4 is 100 and 100 into 2 is 200. So simple. So, we got 25 into 8 as 200. Now, we have to multiply 5 to it. Why we have to multiply 5 to it? Because we have to multiply 25 into 5 into 8. First we multiplied 25 into 8 which gave us 200. Now we have to multiply 5 to it. What will happen if you multiply 200 into 5? You know we can also write 200 as 2 into 100 and multiply 5 to it. So now we can write it as 2 into 100 into 5. We know that 5 into 2 is 10 and 10 into 100 is 1000. So now we have got 1000. How we have got 1000? We have multiplied 25 into 8 into 5. But what was our first question? We had to multiply 125 into 8. Let us recap how we did that. Our question was, we have to find the answer of 125 into 8. Some of you must have got scary how big this question was. But see how easy we made. How we did that? We made factors of it. We wrote 125 as 25 into 5 and then multiplied it by 8. Now, we used the associative property and we rearranged the order. So, now we multiplied 25 into 8 first and then multiply the result by 5. We got 25 into 8 as 200 and multiplying it by 5 gave us 1000. So our final result is 1000. See, such an easy number. Now friends, we have seen that associative property holds true for multiplication. We have seen various examples where we have rearranged the order and got an answer. So friends, now we have seen that associative property holds true for addition and multiplication. Friends, we have seen that addition and multiplication both are associative for whole numbers. And we also see that associativity property of whole numbers helps us in simplifying calculation. And we use them whenever we want to make our calculations quick and easy. So friends, let us try another property. This property is known as distributive property of multiplication over addition. What do you think? Distribution, what does that mean? Friends, have you ever distributed toffees in your school? Or have you ever distributed notebooks whenever a teacher has asked you? Yes, that is our distribution. So friends, let us imagine our school, remember our classrooms and how we used to sit there with our friends. In my school, there were four rows and each row had 
eight students. We can draw this in our notebooks as well. Let us draw four small circles from left to right or horizontally. Now, below each circle, draw seven circles from top to down or vertically. Now, you can check that from top to down, we have eight circles and left to right, we have four circles. Let us count how many total circles we have drawn. We have got 32 small circles, which is also equal to 4 into 8. Very good. Now, you counted each dot one by one. But do you know, we can also distribute our class in various other ways and count these circles. One way is, you can distribute your class in half. So, on your left, you have two long top to bottom columns and eight horizontal rows. I repeat, we can distribute our class in half and on our left, we have two long top to bottom columns and four horizontal rows. So on our left, we have two long top to bottom columns and eight horizontal rows. We can see that there are 16 small circles on our left. We can do that by counting and we can also check that 8 into 2 is 16. On our right side as well, circles are arranged in a same way with 8 rows and 2 columns. We have 16 small circles in total. Therefore, 16 plus 16, we have 32 small circles in total. You can get the same answer by distributing it in many ways. Many of you must be thinking a new way. So, another way can be 4 into 6 and 4 into 2. How we can do that? We can take 4 horizontal rows and 6 vertical columns. We can divide our class into 4 horizontal rows and 6 vertical columns. Now, what we will get? We will get 24 small circles and the remaining circles we can either count that will be 8 or we are left with 4 into 2. We can add 24 and 8. We will get 32 again. See friends, our answer is same. Whatever distribution we can do. First we did by dividing it in half. We got 32 small circles. Then we did by dividing into 4 into 6 and 4 into 2, we again got 32. This is known as distributive property of multiplication over addition. So friends, today we learnt about associative property of addition and multiplication, commutative property and distributive property of multiplication of addition. Distributive property of multiplication over addition. Now friends, let us note some questions which we will all practice today. 42 into 6 and 42 into 36. So we have only two questions to practice which are 42 into 6 and 42 into 36. You have to use properties, okay? Remember that. So let us end our today's lesson. I will come back again with a new and interesting lesson for you. Till then, keep on practicing and stay happy. Friends, you are just listening to the series Dhwani Shala. Production Assistant, Amit Kumar. This series Dhwani Shala was recorded by Bati Langlingdo and Vikas Sangwan. Produced by Vimlesh Chaudhary. And this program is brought to you by CIET NCERT. New Delhi, India.